Happy Friday, everyone, um, and happy St. Patrick's Day. Um, we're in migraine today. <laughs> um, anyways, wanted to go live. It's Friday and do my five on Friday. Um, it has been a week for sure. Lots and lots of challenging issues have come up, <laughs> um, but let's start with my mom. Um, unfortunately, there was a COVID outbreak at her facility again. Um, I did not find out about it. And actually, I found out about it on accident. Um, a friend of mine's mom, who is over there, um, her sister had come to visit on Saturday. And I guess when she went in, they told her about the outbreak. But there was never any formal announcement or anyone that told us what was going on until Monday afternoon. Um, that is just not right. Um, I don't understand what took three days. Um, you know, we're supposed to get a phone call or an email or something like that. We were supposed to be notified if it's more than one person. So I waited until Monday. I usually go visit her on Monday and I called over, got the reception or the front desk lady on the phone and she confirmed it. And I asked her why we weren't notified. And she even said she didn't understand that either. So anyways, she did say that she would recommend that we do not come, so we didn't go. And then Monday afternoon, I got an email, finally, from the new director. There was nothing about her introducing herself or who she was. We still haven't even gotten that information, saying that there were 17 positive cases. I just couldn't even believe what I was reading. I mean, we are three years into this now, and there's protocol that should have been followed, and I do not know why it wasn't. Uh, so we are locked out again. Once again, time wasted, um, and I just cannot believe we're doing this again. Um, I have called the ombudsman and have notified her what's going on. She was also never notified of this. And I'm also thinking about um, filing a complaint with the health department because at this point, this just should not be happening. Um, it's just outrageous. So anyway, she um, is not, thankfully so far, I guess she's tested negative, although who knows because there's just no transparency in that place. And um, she was very out of it um, this week, quite a few times. And my home health nurse went in there, uh, I think it was Wednesday. And Wednesday night, she texted me and told me that my mom was saying that she felt she was being given the wrong medication, which was odd. Um, she was saying that there was like two different pills that were be giving, two pills given to her, two red pills. And she thought that was her amitriptyline, which I pretty sure was not. Um, I used to give her her medication, and that's a night pill. But anyways, they said that she was falling asleep at breakfast, and that was super disturbing because she does not do that. And so, of course, it was Wednesday night. There was nothing I could do. So I had to wait until Thursday morning to call and see what the heck happened. Uh, there's a new QMAP guy, and I don't know. It's just so much you know, that they're telling me that I don't know if I can believe or not. But in the process, I found out that there were pills on her floor again. Um, you know, my lady forgot to tell me that part. Um, I guess somehow they found a pill on the floor. They're saying that the night person is the one that made that mistake or actually maybe not because, you know, maybe she did watch her take it. Maybe she took it out. I don't know. There's just so many things that are just not adding up and not making sense. And it's just the hardest thing ever. I mean, you just feel so powerless in this situation, and it's just the worst feeling ever. Um, you know, I'm still trying to move forward to find her another place, but at this point now, we're stuck. I mean, you can't move her right now, for sure. Um, and so I'm just trying to do the best to, you know, give it um, to God and just, you know, put it in God's hands because, you know, there's only so much I can do at this point, but it is just a horrible, awful feeling. So anyways, that was that with my mom. And then this was also the first anniversary of my sister's death. Uh, yesterday marked the first year and was, you know, dreading that day. But we decided, uh, Amelia and I, my daughter, um, to do a psychic reading. We found, actually, she found a medium here in Denver. And I will link her up um, to you guys. And in the comments, if you want to see her, I mean... You know, it was just unbelievably amazing. And it was something that we really, really needed to do 
for ourselves. It gave us such peace, but I just wrote down some notes about it. And I just wanted to kind of just tell you what she said because it was just literally, it was, it was amazing. I mean, and she absolutely knew nothing about me. Amelia booked this appointment. She wouldn't have known me at all. So there's absolutely no way she could have found, you know, any of this stuff out. But anyways, so basically she started out, um, the first person that came through was my dad and I wasn't really expecting that. Um, but she said that there was two gentlemen and actually hang on one sec. I wrote all this down, kind of made notes, but anyways, yeah. So anyways, she said there were two older gentlemen and there was one that was waving and hi, Rachel, I see you're watching. I am, um, we think it was my uncle Benny, um, which was Rachel, that's your grandpa. And she basically said that he was just so happy and that this person had died of natural causes and it was very peaceful and I definitely think it was him. Um, then she said the other gentleman was with him and then she started saying things about him and that was definitely my father. Um, and the interesting thing is that she basically said that he was the one that was first and foremost. He was the one that was kind of, you know, running things and she said there was like a lot of people there you know she kept saying oh you guys you have a lot of dead people over here I was like yeah we do because that's for sure but anyway so she was saying how all then all of a sudden she said there was another woman and she asked if there was a sister um to she to my mother because she said your mother's still alive and I said yes and then she said there was like she have a sister and I said no and then we figured out that it had to have been my um, Aunt Sally, which is Uncle Benny's wife. And that would make sense. And so then we went on and she said there was another woman coming through. And then, of course, we knew that was my sister. And that's who we really wanted to be, to, you know, come through the most. And anyways, the things that she said were just amazing. She kept saying this person was so tired. And boy, was she tired. And she was saying she's not tired anymore, she's vibrant, she's happy, and she, I just can't even tell you how much that meant to me and my daughter when we heard that, and I was just sobbing, and um, she went on to say that she was with a child, she said she thought it was a boy, and it was, that's the um, son that my, that my sister lost, so we know that they're together, and she said there were dogs, and I just can't even tell you how much that made me happy. And then she went on to say that my father um, had said he it's, that he had died um, quickly. And I was like, that it was sudden. And I was like, yeah, it was. She asked and I said, yes. And then she said that he was glad that it happened that way. And I just totally broke down into tears. And I said, is he mad at me? Because I always have the guilt, you know, for putting him on the hospice and everything that happened with that. And she said, no. And so that was good. And she said, he told her that I worry too much. <laughs> so I can definitely see him saying that. But Anyway, she went on to say things that just blew us away. She said that she knew that my niece was struggling and that there was, asked if my niece had a child. And, you know, we knew, we were th both thinking, Amelia and I, because she does daycare, we knew there were children, but none of her own. And we didn't really want to say too much. And then she kept saying, no, there's a child. And she said, she sees her. And we were like, we remembered that a while ago, my niece had told us a story about how this three-year-old that she watches, who my sister watched from the beginning with her, had said one day when she asked her what she wanted to drink, she said she wanted water with lemon. And that's not something a three-year-old would ever say, but my sister you always used to drink water with lemon. And it was just amazing that we put that together and she said, this child sees her. She sees her, she's there. And, and I can't even tell you how much we thought that was, that just made, made our day. I mean, we were like, that that has to be true because there's no way she could have ever known that. There's no way. But she said that she knows Alexandra's struggling, that's my niece, and that she's watching over her and she's there with her. And so that was very comforting too. She also said something about how my sister said that um, I was right, but that she didn't want to admit that because she doesn't like admitting that she's right, which was kind of funny. Um, but it just, I, I can't even tell you how much, uh, this reading meant to us. And I don't know if you guys believe in these things, but she said that, you know, our loved ones are with us. 
they are on the other side and to me that's just everything I made. I always had a belief in that, but this to me just was, you know, the validation that, you know, we really needed. And so that was something that was ex really uplifting. So I just wanted to share that with you guys. And then let me just show you this. We just kind of made like this little memorial for her yesterday. We've been, um, we lit the yard site candle yesterday in Jewish tradition. You light the candle for 24 hours. And then this picture, was my sister when she was around 19 and she was just getting ready to get married that was her first dog his name was wolf and it was actually her ex-mother-in-law's dog and they lived in houston and the mother-in-law her mother ex mother in law she gave her the dog and that dog was quite the character um and this was when my sister was at her healthiest of you know all the times after her diagnosis of ulcerative colitis and um, you know, but you can also tell that she also was way too thin then also, you know, I mean, she always had eating disorder issues and, but anyways, it just, you know, it was really great to hear the medium say that she was, you know, that she was happy and that just, you know, meant the world. And then she said about my dad, that my dad is now taken over and he is kind of like the one that's been taken over and, and my father never took charge of anything here in the in the real life in that, in this life and it's just amazing to hear that you know it, she said it's kind of like an alcoholic you know when you like go to alcoholic anonymous you know going to change your ways and not being alcoholic anymore that he realized all the mistakes he made and now he's changed into a different person and that he's watching over us and so that was amazing and she also talked about my mother and she said that my mother sees him which I would believe and that um, my mother isn't going anywhere anytime soon. So I'm not sure what to think of that. Um, but, you know, I just hope, you know, that this maybe gives you guys hope. <laughs> but anyways, this is, let's skip, move on to things in Etsy. I did have an order this week and um, this is a tutu I got. This is a little monkey tutu and um, I haven't done this one in a while. So this is really cute. And then I had my three little oven boxes. Um, these are, it was a big seller. Um, you can put an actual cupcake um, in these. They open up, if I can get it open, hang on. And you can actually put a real cupcake in there. So those are really fun. Um, but anyways, so that's that. And then I'll just give you guys a quick peek of Zoe here. She's down here. <laughs> Um, I had already given them their treat balls, but anyways, let me, uh, flip this back over. So anyways, that's pretty much it. Oh, then on top of that, there were a couple other challenging things. Um, we had, uh, the sewer line back up again for the second time in less than a month. That was fun. Uh, that was at one o'clock in the morning, um, yesterday. <coughs> But anyways, it's working again, but if it happens again, we're gonna have to get a camera down there and it could be a bigger problem. Hang on one sec. Um, which I'm praying is not the case because that could turn into a very expensive situation. And then one more thing um, before I end it, um, I've been trying to switch some funds at the bank um, from my mom and they're just making it extremely, extremely hard. Um, I was hoping we could do it online and it was should be something simple, but they are making it very difficult for me and making me have to go in again, which really sucks. So anyways, um, that's that. So let's just end this um, in a little bit of prayer. Um, if you guys could just keep my friend Jana in your prayers. Um, she's going to have to have surgery on Monday for her back. And I'm hoping that it will be the answer to her pain because she's been in a lot of pain. And, and it all happened just basically because of a fall. Just she fell on ice and it's basically just turned her world upside down. And I just feel so bad for her. So we can keep her in prayer. And then also Josh and his um, mom and his aunt, his aunt isn't doing well. Um, and also, you know, if you guys can just, you know, we need to say a prayer for this world, um, especially the people that are, you know, struggling, um, you know, stop the, help the, stop the war in Ukraine and help the women in Iran, 
you know, stop the LGBTQIA hate and the anti-Semitism, um, you know. So anyways, I hope something today I've said has been helpful. Sorry, Zoe is running miss. But um, I hope something I said today is helpful and something I've said has uplifted you. Um, I hope you have a really good weekend and I'll talk to you again next week.